Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. I have spent a great amount of time in the past week trying to comprehend what we all are feeling. Apprehension, fear, excitement, and a little bit of hesitation. Yesterday, we were high school students worrying about gas reflections. Tomorrow, we are going on to study in some of the biggest educational institutes globally. And today, we are at the brink of change. Until today, there has always been a strong support system and a sense of security that came from knowing that we could always fall back upon our parents, our teachers, that we would be given attention, we would be given second chances to address our mistakes and second guesses for our inhibitions. So is what is affecting us today the fear of losing that support? Is it the responsibility of adulthood? Is it the dilemma between being at the brink of childhood and adulthood and not being able to balance both? The truth is that it is probably all of the above. We are all at a transition in life where everything changes, where we finally have to face that fear and find a way to be comfortable with it. I, much like a lot of my fellow students, have spent the better part of my life being cautious. I always found pride in my careful nature. But today, we'd like to think that that part of us has changed and evolved. We've come to realize that if you don't take risks in life, then while you are safeguarding yourself from the possibility of failure, you are also foregoing the chance of success. And being one of the biggest lessons that I have learned through this school, I think it is the best piece of advice that I can share with the graduating class today. It is okay to take chances. It is also okay to fear losses and defeat. But know that those friendships and that support that we are so afraid of losing has been imbibed by us. And it is now a part of us. Our decisions, our thought processes, and our achievements have always been a conglomeration of the best possible advice that everyone, on, everyone in our lives has given us. Sometimes, intangible things such as friendships, emotions, and feelings do have to be prioritized over what is conventionally or seemingly important. Remember that you are an amalgamation of every person who has had an influence on your life growing up. Remember that the uncertainty that we are feeling today is resonating in each and every one of your classmates. And so is the excitement and pride. Although some of us walked into this school just two years ago, it has already become our home. I speak on behalf of the entire graduating batch when I express the deep emotional connection that we have to this school. There is a love, a comfort, a sense of family when we think about eating idlis in the social area, befriending most of our teachers, becoming serious about work together, and facing losses together. We cannot be more thankful for the unity that we have found in this institution, where we can, even after just two years, have blind faith in the support that we have gotten and will continue to get from this school. And it would be remiss of me to not take this opportunity to, on behalf of the entire graduating batch, every single individual is highlighted. The heads for giving us as many chances as we deserved and taking a personal interest in every student. The teachers for tirelessly working for us, for standing up for us, and motivating us to achieve our fullest potential. 
We would also like to thank the administrative team, the IT team, the lift men, the security, and the housekeeping for aiding our school lives with their unstinting support. To the graduating class of 2015, you must trust that you are prepared. Trust that you are equipped with every aspect of your character to face this fear and to enjoy the independence. Be ready to take risks. And when you take that path of indecisiveness, then know that we are there for each other and that we always will be. That being said, I know that we will miss each other and this institution immensely. I am so honored to be given the opportunity to represent you all today. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And I know that we will always be privileged to go out into the world as DAIS alumni, calling each other friends. I would like to end with a quote, which I think perfectly sums up our emotions today. You have to leave the city of your comfort and go into the wilderness of your intuition. You can't get there by bus, only hard work and risk. And by not quite knowing what you're doing, but what you will discover will be wonderful. What you will discover will be yourself. Thank you. Beginnings are usually daunting and endings are bittersweet, but it's everything in between that makes it all worth living. When we set foot in DAIS as kindergartners, our teachers gave us this survival kit. Through all these years, from the day we first wore our sun-emblazoned uniforms to the day we last sported our untucked checkered shorts, we have inadvertently banked on it. And so, today, as we celebrate the end of this journey and look towards the new adventure that we will be embarking on, I would like to prefer to you the contents of this survival kit as a fond reminder of the road we have traveled together and as a tool for the rest of our lives. This sticker to remind us that we will always stick together and this red ribbon to remind us that friendship ties our hearts together. I think that it's fair to say that there is no bond greater than the one that exists between 106 people who have been terrorized by nightmares of the school's upward curve and who have held an inexplicable desire to set off the fire alarm. I hope with all of my heart that I am right when I say that what we have created here is indestructible and that regardless of where we go or who we become, we will always have each other. Lifesavers, to remind us that there will always be people whom we can lean on. And this cotton ball, to remind us of warm words and kind feelings. The DAIS family is full of caring lifesavers. DAIS has always had someone to guide us, defend us. Our parents have been our anchors of support for 18 long years. And of course, our siblings, have often doubled up as essay editors and speech writers. Today, I think it is integral to thank these lifesavers who have played a formational roles in helping us become the people we are. Thank you. We must also recognize that in everything we do, there will always be someone working in the background of our success. I can vouch for the fact that when my light has dimmed, these are the people who have reignited the flame within me. And although we can never repay their sacrifices, we can be grateful. This gratitude should not just be a reaction to getting what you want, but an all the time gratitude, where you appreciate the people and things you would often take for granted. Mother Teresa talked about how grateful she was to the people she was helping, the sick and the dying in the slums of Calcutta, because they enabled her to deepen her spirituality. That's a very different way of thinking about gratitude. Gratitude for what we can give as opposed to what we receive. So starting today, be grateful for your lifesavers and for the lives that you will undoubtedly save. The toothpick, to remind us to pick out the best in people. This class is filled with people who have inspired me every day. More importantly, recognize 
that we are an amalgamation of the people we meet and the experiences we share. We are still discovering our identities and forging who we are. And there will always be something more to learn from someone else. The Band-Aid to heal hurt feelings. The tissue to remind us to help dry someone else's tear. The rub rubber band to remind us to hug someone. And the smiley face to comfort us when we are feeling sad. I still remember the first time our class cried together. To our seventh grade selves, it didn't seem fair that despite all the ruckus we'd created in middle school, we were the only class to be shuffled. Remember, however, that there is hurt in our world that cannot be fixed with band-aids and tissues. We live in a world where as we girls sit here at our graduation, we live in a world where religious and racial intolerance threaten to tear nations apart. We live in a country where farmers are dying every day because they have no water, whilst we beat the heat in our swimming pools. We are a generation on, these, on the brink. Until now, these problems have just been issues at an MUN conference. But these are real problems, and they are our problems. We need to start engaging actively with the future. These problems can no longer exist on the fringes of our reality. Whether we become diplomats or engineers or even actors, it is us who can heal the hurt in our world. Remember, there are always problems greater than ourselves. And don't let these problems frighten you, because we, as a generation, must be the solution to these problems. Recognize big problems and think big solutions, because if we don't, no one will. The, the eraser to remind us that we all make mistakes. We've stumbled and messed up personally and as a class, and we've had the opportunity to rectify those mistakes. We have stumbled amongst our peers only so that we can soar above the rest in the outside world. But regardless of how prepared we are, we will make mistakes and we will encounter failure. But scraped knees are the small price you pay to win the race. So go, build, create, challenge, do things that seem impossible, make mistakes and do it all over again. Because the only real way to fail at life is to abstain. The star, to remind you to shine and always try your best. It seems absurd for me to stand in front of a graduating class with published authors, accomplished artists, performing musicians, international athletes, and empowered social activists, and say, aim for the stars. Instead, I am going to tell you to always be your version of successful, whatever it is. I know that each and every one of you will be exceptional wherever you go. But if you find yourself unhappy and unfulfilled, I hope that you have the courage to start over. Remember that there is no statute of limitations on reinventing yourself and chasing down what you want. Be a phoenix, burn down, resurrect. Let go of the idea that you must always be who you have always been. In 2003, our parents walked us into a brand new school, not knowing what lay ahead. Tonight, they will walk us out of these gates for one last time knowing that they made the right choice. Today is a celebration of what we have achieved and of the glory and triumphs that are to come. It is a recollection of the hardships we have faced and the challenges that are to come. Today, we step out of the comfort of familiarity towards the magical wilderness that is adulthood. As you walk out of these gates as DAIS alumni, remember the survival kit. We must cherish the strength from our friendships. We must be grateful. We must always pick out the best in people. We must heal the hurt in our world. We must be willing to make mistakes. And we must always want to be our version of successful. Thank you for 13 magical years. <laughs>